blessing and a prayer of thanksgiving. That prayer of blessing can be seen at verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. So that we understand in Jesus, we have everything, everything that we need spiritually. And of course, when we talk spiritually here, we're talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit who brings us to Christ. Let's continue in this prayer of blessing. In verse 5, you notice that we're going to talk about predestination. We've been predestined for adoption as sons. To be sons means to be heirs of the promise, eternal life in Christ that he has won for us. And so when we talk about predestination, of course, we have to talk about redemption. So you've dropped down to verse 7 in Ephesians chapter 1. In Christ we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses. trespasses. So you, you can't have predestination without the redemption. You can't have the assurance of eternal life without the price paid for our lives in the blood of Christ. And so you have this understanding of predestination connected to redemption. And so again, if you look at verse 11, Paul talks about predestination once more. In Christ we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things together. And so here it is in Christ, this predestination once again, connected, like a, it's like a redemption sandwich, predestination predestination, but in the middle is the redemption through the blood of Jesus. And so in this prayer, you, you're, we're blessing God, blessed be God the Father for doing this for us in Christ, and it is in Christ that we are blessed. And then after this uh, prayer of blessing, we want to also look at a prayer of thanksgiving. And so this prayer of thanksgiving, it picks up at verse 15, uh, in which we talk about uh, the faith that we have in Jesus Christ and the love we have for the saints. And this is where Paul wants to give thanks. So he's giving thanks because of what he has seen and heard, the confession of who Christ is and the acting out of this faith in love toward one another. So it's in uh, verse 16 where he says, I will give thanks. I'm continually giving thanks. In verse 17, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation and the knowledge of him. Uh, that we have here this understanding of the Holy Blessed Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives us the gift of wisdom and revelation. He is the one who enlightens us. So this is why the next verse, Paul goes on and he says, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened that you may know what is the hope to which he's called us. This hope, of course, is the hope we have of eternal life, the hope we have of the bodily resurrection. So Christ paid the price for our sins on the cross, but when the tomb is empty, we have this assurance that Christ has overcome death and the grave. He has defeated and swallowed up death. Death cannot contain him. He has dominion over death. And therefore, death does not have dominion over us who've been baptized and united into the death and resurrection of Christ. So this is the work of the Holy Spirit in the church. And so notice that in this prayer of blessing, we're talking about the work of redemption and the blood of Jesus. But in the prayer of thanksgiving, we're talking about the continuous work of the Holy Spirit applying for us or giving to us the gift of the forgiveness of our sins and the assurance that we have in Christ. And so if you continue on, you see that it says here in verse 20 that the Father worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead. So that's the resurrection here. Before we were talking about redemption in his blood on the cross. Now we're talking about the victory, the triumph over death and the grave. And so you see this again in verse 20, where we're talking about the being raised from the dead. And then he seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. So that Christ has ascended into heaven, and when he ascends, he then pours forth the Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit, and the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the works of the Holy Spirit that he's working in our lives through the promise of the gospel. And in this picture of Christ here in this thanksgiving is that Christ is the head and the church is the body. So in verse 22, he has put all things under his feet. Who is that? The Father. The Father has put all things under the feet of Christ. And he's given him as head over all things to the church, 
which Paul says is the body. So in this first chapter of Ephesians, the letter to the baptized in Ephesus, we are learning about the person and work of Christ and the person and work of the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church, making us holy by the Holy Word of God, which of course will then lead us into chapter 2, Later on, when we learned that apart from Christ, we were dead in our trespasses, but we were made alive by Christ who overcame death in the grave. I hope to see you here uh, this Sunday as we study the book of Ephesians, the epistle to 